coming to you. And we're inviting you to come into one of our services to bring glory and honor to God's name, to raise up a supernatural army with signs and wonders and miracles. Can you be part of this move? In Jesus' name, and everybody say amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Grabs her and she dragged her clean up to the front and she said, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. God totally 100% healed that woman. Her daughter jumps up in total amazement because of what she's seen. In the anointing, and please don't take this the wrong way. But sometimes when the anointing's on you, you, you don't get to just go touching the person or whoever. Don't touch God's anointing at that time unless you're in the place where you should. And she come forward and she was reaching for me and I was scared for her. I don't know if you understand, but I was scared for her. And I stepped back to get away from her. I put my hand like this here. And when I did, the power of God hit her and knocked her flat to the ground. And as soon as she hit, she started to cry, Jesus, 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 please save me. And God dealt with me. He filled her with the Holy Ghost right there in the spot. She went back to her factory and won every person, including the boss, to the Lord. So I say Hallelujah. I did not even want... I have a whole list of signs, wonders, and miracles through the Word of God. I want to, but, but I was telling the Lord, I'm not even going to talk about the things that happen in my life, but how many of you know you've got to let Him just speak through you? I'm not standing up here talking about something that I don't know something about. I've experienced every one of these things from raising the dead three times, and I can tell you many, many types of things. But why is it that we do not sit in the body of Christ? Let me say this. Now you heard me say this before. I'm going to say it again. Number one, you're no good to yourself, anyone else, including God, till first you know who you are in God. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And if you know you're saved and you're born again, you've been baptized, you're a believer, then get the signs following. But how do you get the signs following? You've got to get in His holy of holy presence. Someone say, I You've got to get the sin out. I beseech you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Come on. My Lord and my God. Somebody say, my Lord and my God. I want to turn. Somebody said, well, you, you know, all these signs and wonders and miracles for today. Let's go to Acts chapter 2 and verse 43. Acts chapter 2, verse 43. And fear came upon every soul. You find that so far? Acts chapter 2, 43. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders, somebody say wonders, many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Many what? Signs and wonders. We know they also performed the miracles. <clears throat> well, let's go back and find out what a sign is. A sign is this. Something to indicate something in the future or something at the present or something that already has been. You go down the road and you see signs. You see a twisted sign with an arrow on it. It means curves. That's a sign. There's a curve ahead. Somebody say amen. You see a sign that says stop 100 feet or whatever it might be. You see a sign saying Arkansas, so many miles. It's telling you something in the future. And Jesus speaks about when all these signs come to pass, know that I'm near even at the doors. The Word of God is full of signs pointing us to the return of the Lord. So you cannot pick up your Bible and say, I don't believe in signs. You might as well throw the Bible away. So signs and wonders were done by the apostles. Is there any difference between you and I? We already read what Jesus said. These signs shall follow them. That's you and I. <clears throat> I 
I might have told you this before. I was in a church back years ago. And the minister, he said, if anybody need prayer, come forth. And I went up and dropped down on my knees and I was praying. And he came over and bent down and he said, Brother Humphrey, what do you need? I said, I want to become a Christian. That made him stand up. He said, I thought you was a... And no man can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversely difference of gifts, but the same Spirit. He says there are difference of administration, but the same Lord. How many of you know when he's talking about administrations, how many of you know that if you need a foot operation, you don't go to an eye surgeon? Somebody say amen. amen. If you need a certain part of your body operated on, he said there's different administrations by the Spirit that will come and help you in that area. And who's it come through? It comes through the body of Christ. By the Spirit of God, through the body of Christ. Nine gifts of the Holy Ghost. Let's find out what they are. He says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Let's back up on so what that says. The manifestation. The word manifestation means to show openly, plainly, to reveal. Manifest itself. God wants to manifest itself to the world. I am God. I want to manifest myself through my power, through my anointing, through my people, through my gifts. Hmm. Let's find out. Once again, people out there in television land or wherever or here in the, the church, it's not to knock everybody, but how many of you know God's trying to get us to a higher place in Him? So many of the church folks have flatlined. What they was 20 years ago, they're still the same today or even less. But we should not be like that. He says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. How, how, how many of us should have this then? It says, how many? Every, every person Every person, every person, put your finger at yourself and say, He's talking about me. Now take your finger and look at somebody else and say, He's talking about you. To profit with all. Well, what's it mean, profit with all? You know, it's a lot of benefits in being led by the Spirit of God. When you are being led and used by the Spirit of God, not only the people will benefit from it, but you'll benefit too. When you are being used of God, when Jesus was used, He felt virtually. You'll feel your strength leave. Sometimes, when I'm in a service, it'll take me three days to recover. I remember one time we went to a certain church and people had heard about what God was doing. And when I walked into the church, I had to walk up like six steps outside to come into the church. And by the time I got to the top deck, I started to pass out. And I thought, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? And I, I always try to stay away from people, not to talk and shake hands and stuff, especially when I'm going someplace different to minister. And I walked in church, and in the first seat I, I went, and I sat down real quick. And I bowed my head, and I thought, I hope people will stay away from me because I'm ready to pass out. And I said, God, what's... And the Lord spoke to me and He said, virtue has left your body because they was expecting you to do something. How many of you know it's not you, it should be Him? And I had to get up and rebuke the church and say, get your eyes off of Brother Humphrey, but get your eyes on Jesus. But when you're being used, God will, you'll, you'll feel your strength leave you. But God will give you a special anointing. Come on. There's nothing any better to be in His holy presence. He gives you every man to prove with all. Let's find out here very quickly because I'm running out of time. 
He says, verse 8, for one, to, to one is given the, the Spirit of the Lord, the Word of Wisdom. The Word of Wisdom, what is it? Direction. How many times have the Lord used me and used you or whoever to speak a word to somebody and give them direction, tell them don't do this or that or whatever, face this marriage problem or so forth? How many of you know a lot of people can't hear from the Lord? And you need somebody that can hear from the Lord and come with a word of wisdom or word of knowledge or one of the gifts to minister to them. Is anybody still here? Amen. It's signs. It's wonders. It's miracles to bring glory to His name. We was in church this morning and, and the young man that uh, like the assistant pastor that opens up the service and so forth. They went to a church service somewhere last night. And this man has really been facing, him and his wife facing a lot of things, their daughter facing a lo lo long time in prison, thus and thus. And they're going through all kinds of trouble. And when they went into this church, this man of God, came back and prophesied exactly what was going on in their life. And God let them know, I have everything under control. He was so excited about this. He was so full of energy. His wife was likewise. My son, Posa had diabetes, which we just heard yesterday. And the Lord spoke to my wife because the spirit of fear tried to get on my wife. And what was the words he said to you, hon? And she's going through the house praying about my son. And the Lord spoke to her and said, Fear is not of me. I did not give you a spirit of fear. Somebody say hallelujah. How good we feel whenever God, when we know that God has spoken to us. Somebody say hallelujah. And every one of you in here, I'm sure at one time somebody had ministered to you through the Spirit of God and you felt so good about it. But what about you? Why ain't you being used? It's not God's fault. We read these signs of follow them that believe. We re we're reading about the gifts. You see, Pastor Mike here should not have to <coughs> get a whole group of people here three times a week and come out and minister to every last one of them. It's uncalled for. Every one of you should be able to minister to one another and to others that comes in. God's no respecter of persons. There's neither a male nor female. Greek, Jew, free born. We're one. Many times people say, oh, he's a prophet. He hears from God. But there's many times I say with myself, God, I know that you got the answer, and I know you're with me. But God, it would just do, be real good if somebody would just walk up just one time to me. In my 35 years, I probably only ever got prophesied to, ministered to maybe eight, nine times. I thank God for those eight or nine times. The gifts. The gifts. He said to every man. The Bible says several. Why? Why would He give us the gifts? To prove that He's God. To prove that He's God. Like that one woman in one service, she said, you don't even know my name. And the Lord said, your name's Mary. Somebody say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> For one is given the word of wisdom, direction. To another, the word of knowledge. Uh, calling out conditions or whatever. How many times have you heard or seen someone call out the exact conditions? I, I could tell you thousands of these things, but one just come to mind. 
I, I, the reason I come to mind because I've seen it since I spoke it. I was in a church one time and, and I said, there's somebody in here. I said, you've got big red spots the size of a quarter to a half a dollar all over your body. They, they all but join. You're covered with these red spots. God wants to heal you. Who are you? And everybody's pointing up at me. I said, it's not me, but a bunch of ministers behind me. <clears throat> and a woman ministers back there had a real high, like the old time callers and so forth like that. She pulled up her sleeve and she was totally 100% covered. And God instantly, right before her eyes, they disappeared. We was in the Philippines many years ago. We flew out, or didn't fly out. Well, I can't remember. I don't know. We, I guess we took a boat. Yeah, we took a boat to some remote island. We got there, and people had never seen a white man. And we had to minister. And the communist was there, and one of them was in a coconut tree. I seen him in the coconut tree up on the mountain in the spirit. The brother Angel's wife told him when he came back, there's a communist, a man went up that tree was going to shoot us. But when we got right where he was at, some people was coming down the road and a little girl, probably about waist high, she had, I don't know what you call them, boils or cysts or whatever, they were oozing all over her body. You could not take a finger and put on her head, her neck, her arms. And if I remember correctly, I think all she had on was just some little panties or something. I don't even know what she had on. And for the first time in my life when I seen this little girl, I went, oh. If one second, it sort of caused me to back back, if you understand. What, the only time in my whole life. And the Lord said, I, I want her healed now to bring glory to my name. And me and Brother Angel was supposed to lay hands on her. I didn't, for the first couple of seconds, didn't even want to touch her. But we laid hands on her. People was watching. And then the Lord spoke to me. He said, tell, tell them to send a runner to get that cactus and rub that cactus juice on her. I said, Lord, we're in the jungle. Cactuses does not grow in the jungle. How many of you know what I'm talking about? But if God said, send a runner to get the cactus, there must be a cactus. So we got the interpreter to tell them and a man took off and he comes back with a cactus they rubbed the juice all over her the next day they brought her and not only her but all kinds of people was foreign she was as clean as a little baby somebody say hallelujah it opened up that part of the island signs wonders miracles to prove by this I know your God is God. <sighs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> he says to another faith by the same Spirit. My mother had faith like you would not believe. She worked in miracles, wonders. Mama worked in everything. Right in front of her house, a black man, Mama had talked to him many times about the Lord. He worked on the garbage truck. And right in front of the house, a truck come up over and hit him and drove him into the back of the garbage truck and cut him literally completely in half, waist down. They took him out of there. His guts was hanging out and everything else. And they just literally pronounced him dead on the scene. But Mama, full of the Holy Ghost, comes out and lays hands on him. And I forget what his name uh, Walter. His name was Walter. She said, Walter, she said, you're not going to die. You're going to live. You'll be okay. Walter was out of bed the next day walking around. Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> this is the kind of background I come from. Mama worked in the Word of Wisdom, Word of Knowledge. Me and my wife and brother and sister and a couple of us were going to go robbery. Pulled out my mother's place to pick my sister and her boyfriend up. And God spoke to my mama. 
Mama comes out on the porch. She said, God told me you're off to no good. <laughs> and if you go do what you're going to do, you're going to jail tonight. My brother said, Mom, shut up! Every time you say something like that, it happens. So that night, me and my brother was in the jailhouse. Somebody say, Hallelujah. You see, God is real. See, fear will come upon the world. We read about fear coming up on the church. When Elijah, the prophet, came into town, they said, Come to him, they said, Come in peace. They were fearful. How many of you know people sh should not be afraid of you, but they should be afraid of the God that we have? Amen. Pastor Mike said to me when I came in here, the church has lost its fear. My Bible said, beginning of fear, beginning of wisdom is to fear God. Too much game playing in church. He says, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gift of healing. If my mama laid hands on your bubba, I don't care what the doctor said or anyone said, you're healed. When my mama had those three massive heart attacks in Israel, and she was in the Hadassah, Hadassah Hospital with Golden My Air, and I got to preach to Golden My Air, and her daughters and the, their husband and the whole Israeli stuff and told them all about my Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. Talk to her personally. Somebody say hallelujah. Come on. And that doctor said, your mother will die. I said, no, doc. He said, you seem to forget where you are. He said, you're in Israel. He said, we believe in God. I said, yeah, I know that. But we go one step farther. We believe in His Son, Jesus Christ, and my mama is going to live. He said, your mama's going to die. My mama left, and she, she lived all these years. That came back in 1971, and she just passed away here last year. And she didn't die. Mama said, I just want to go home. She said, now you tend to your cows, and I'll tend to my... I just want to go home to my Jesus and mama went home. Somebody say, hallelujah. hallelujah. Woo! Somebody say, Hallelujah. hallelujah. Signs, wonders, and miracles to bring glory to His name. Signs, wonders, and miracles. God's raising up that army. <sighs> holy God, holy God, holy God. I'm watching the clock. Hallelujah. To another working of miracles, to another prophecy. <sighs> Every one of us should be able to prophesy. Every last one of them should be able to prophesy. It's impossible to get in the presence of God and talk to the great I Am without Him talking back to you or Him telling you to tell somebody else. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. We went to China, or Russia, and I refused to take history books home when I was in school. I was going to be an old hillbilly trapper. So I thought, what, what's the use in reading books if I'm going to be right there with animals? <laughs> stupid and as we're coming into Russia the Lord spoke to me I'm sitting on the plane looking down upon Russia and he spoke to me about Russia and he's talked about how I'll come against thee and the word the word the Lord said this and your blood shall run from the chrism, chrism, chrism wall even to the river I turned around and looked at everybody on I said, what's a Kremlin? I thought it was a donut. There's a donut that called... They said, no, the Kremlin is like our White House. I said, it is. He said, the blood shall run from their White House to the wall, even to the river. The next day, our Russian tour guide got us on board and said, we're going to take you down to the Kremlin. And we got down to the Kremlin. There's the Kremlin. There's a big stone wall. And there's the river. Somebody say, hallelujah. Come on. Don't tell me God don't speak precisely. God needed somebody to prophesy. The day's coming when their blood will run from the criminal wall, come from the criminal to the wall, even to the river. If my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins. I will heal their lands. <laughs> I 
Closing with these words. You had no choice of being born. God made you without your choice. The Bible says He wants to fit you into His body as it pleases Him. You need to confess and say, God, I had no choice of being born, but I have a choice who I'm going to serve. Now here am I, O oh Lord. Use me. And somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Give the Lord a great big hand. ministry. You can see the rest of this message each Sunday evening, your local time. If you would like to receive our monthly newsletter and know the things the Lord is speaking to Prophet Humphrey, then please send a love offering to help cover our expenses. Also, if you would like to have an anointed prayer cloth and become a ministry partner, send us your picture so we can pray, lay hands on you and your need and expect signs, wonders, and miracles in your life. Starting today, you will never be the same. Our website is upperroomministry.net. If you would like to schedule a speaking engagement, contact our ministry. All glory to Jesus. Amen. Amen.